Hello and welcome to part four of Accounting for Investments to help you prepare for class. It is important that you view this before class so that we can learn together in class. This video will discuss how to account for investments using the equity method. The equity method is used when the investor has significant influence. After viewing this video, you will know when to use the equity method, know how to record the three journal entries required to account for investments using the equity method. The equity method is used only when the investor has significant influence. Significant influence is, pre is present when the investor has access to financial information other investors do not, has a seat on the board, or has a clear ability to influence operating decisions. An investor with significant influence is treated as an owner. The equity method reports the investment on the balance sheet at a value that is a representation of ownership. The company invested in is referred to as the investee. The investment account increases when the other company, the investee's, owner's equity increases. This occurs when they earn income. The investment account decreases when the other companies, the investees, owner's equity decreases. This occurs with losses and dividends. Three journal entries are made at the end of each period when using the equity method. The first two entries change the investment account for changes in the investee's owner's equity. The investee's owner's equity changes with profits or losses or dividends. The third entry eliminates the difference in the cost of the investment in the own percentage of the investee's owner's equity reported on the balance sheet. The investment was initially reported at fair market value on the purchase date. The investee owner's equity is reported at book value. The difference in fair market value, which is the cost of the investment, and the book value, which is the investee's owner's equity, is due to assets that were paid more or less for and for goodwill that was purchased. The investment is not reported on the balance sheet at fair market value. Fair market value is not relevant when the investment is held long term as an owner with no intent to sell. The original historical cost is adjusted for each of the three journal entries. The first journal entry records the investor's share of the investee's net income. Multiply the investee's net income by the percent ownership to get the change to the investment account. Income increases the investment account and the investor reports revenue on the income statement. Losses reduce the investment account and the investor reports an expense on the income statement. The revenue and expense are non-cash. No cash is paid or received. The second entry under the equity method is to record the investor's share of dividends. The investor's share is their percent of total dividends declared or the number of shares they own times the dividend per share. The investor is considered to be a significant owner. When cash is paid to the owner, it is considered a return of capital invested. In other words, an owner cannot pay themselves a dividend and report it as income on the income statement. Dividends declared reduce the investee company's owner's equity and when owner's equity decreases, the investment account decreases also. The third entry eliminates the beginning difference between the fair market value of the investment at the time of purchase and the total owner's equity reported by the investee. Remember, the goal of the equity method is to report the investment at the percent of ownership of the investee's owner's equity. To accomplish this, the differences in fair market value at the time of purchase and the book value on their balance sheet must be removed. The investor will know which assets had a different fair market value than book value at the time of purchase. The difference is divided by the useful life of the asset to get the amount that is recorded each period. The amount recorded will change the investment account. This is much easier to understand with numbers and we will work through an example in the next investment video. The investor pays more than book value because a goodwill not on the balance sheet and the value of the other assets is different than what's reported on the balance sheet. 
The cash paid is the fair market value at the time of purchase and is the amount the investment account started with. The book value is what the investment account needs to be. The difference is due to assets that had a different fair market value than book value. The investment account must increase or decrease depending on what needs to occur to get it to book value. Each asset identified is adjusted separately. However, there is no adjustment for goodwill. There will always be a difference for goodwill. When fair market value is less than book value, this means the investor paid less than the owner's equity reported on the investee's balance sheet. The investment account was initially recorded lower and must be increased. It started lower and must increase to be equal. When fair market value is more than book value, this means the investor paid more than the owner's equity reported on the investee's balance sheet. The investment account was initially recorded higher and must be decreased. It started higher and must decrease to be equal. After viewing this video, you should know when to use the equity method to account for investments. You should also be able to record the debits and credits for the three journal entries related to the equity method. We will go through an example with numbers in the next video. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.